was a time when Oklahoma Territory had its great free ranges. The cowboy went about his daily work, contentment in his heart, his only boundary the limitless horizon. These were peaceful days. Then the cattle herds disappeared. Oklahoma was open to the settler. The government cut the ranches into sections and they became farms. Ringed by barbed strands, the free range was no more. The cowboy who could not be fenced in stared in anger at the intruder, blaming him for their loss of livelihood. Instead of turning their hand to a plow, their hand went to a six-gun to take what they reasoned was rightfully theirs, then to be joined by others. So the outlaw gangs came, the James boys, the younger brothers, then behind them, the United States Marshals, pushing on relentlessly. It was our sworn duty to hunt down, to destroy this lawless element. And then finally, bolder than their forerunners, the Daltons. Coffeeville, Kansas, October 5th, 1892. The Dalton gang becoming so daring as to strike in broad daylight. The Dalton brothers, with Sam Powers, Bill Broadwell, and Wichita Smith, See you walking around so free and easy like. What brings you to town? I had to come in and get a little spending money for over Sunday. I'm doing the same thing myself. What's the matter with it, mister? Never saw a man so bad he had to be shot in the back. That's strange, coming from a marshal. You sound like you knew the Daltons. Sure I did. Friends of mine. Punch cattle with them. You make a habit of being friends of outlaws? They weren't when I met them. Fact is, both Grant and Bob once wore a marshal's badge, just like that. That's right. You live around here? Just passing through. I didn't get your name. Didn't give it. I'd like to have a talk with you sometime. Sure. Sometime. Sheriff, I got to talk to you. Yeah, I'm busy with you, though. But, Sheriff, it's You've been paid your reward money. Well, it ain't a reward. There's flowers in them Dalton graves. Well, what of it? Well, only two men could put flowers in them graves, Bill Dalton and Bill Doolin. Uh, how come they went along in the bank robbery? Dalton crippled his arm a couple of days ago. Doolin's horse pulled up lame on the way in this morning. Doolin? I never heard of him. Well, he's new. He just joined up. They're in town someplace. Get a posse and bring him in. Uh, none of that Dalton bunch is going to be poking his nose at Coffeeville after today. All right, but they might get me. That's right. Then you wouldn't be able to spend that reward money. Well, I'm riding out of here tonight. If I were you, I'd ride far out. Come here. Bill do 
Charles, and you out of your mind, this town's full of marshals. Don't you know what happened? I don't know all of it. Seven men rode into town, and I only found five graves. How come you're alive? Only because I wasn't with the others, my horse pulled up lame. The horse over there didn't pull up lame. Wichita's squealer. When he comes to get it, I'm going to kill him. You'll never get by with that. I don't care. nothing you can do that'll bring those boys back. That's easy talk for you. They weren't your brothers. They might as well have been. They were my best friends. Maybe you're right. Maybe I am. Don't shoot, Dolan. Climb down, Wichita. Climb down. First man. Self-defense. Another Dalton. Make them believe that. It's the Dalton. Another Dalton. Go on, Doolin. From now on, it's going to be one, one big chase. It's the Dalton. Another Dalton. Get him. New name to be entered in the files of the United States Marshal's office. Bill Doolin, fugitive. A man against the world, with no thought now but of escape. Forced to keep moving, forced to travel alone, to live alone, with the doors of free men closed forever against him. But though survival is the first instinct, man is not meant to survive in solitude. He must have companionship. But there are left only those like himself, outcasts. Someday somebody's gonna shoot you for a deer, Arkansas. Doolin, I know you'd show up sooner or later. <laughs> Can't keep running forever, can you? Company? Business associates. Uh, see, you still have the habit of sleeping outside. Yeah, you live longer that way. See, when the shooting starts, I don't have to stop to open no door. Boys, I want you to meet an old pal of mine. We polished a lot of saddle leather together when we worked at the old Bar Z Ranch in the old days. Bitter Creek, Red Buck, Big Bill Doolin. Howdy. Three jacks. Aces. Three of them. Who dealt? What do you suppose? Glad to know you, Mr. Doolin. Howdy. Me and the boys here are sort of in the investment business ourselves. In a small way, of course. How are you doing? Well, we opened a bank or two. We could use a man like you. I'm against it. I don't blame me. Is that any way to talk to a guest? We got enough peace officers chasing us now. Once he joins up, we'll have an army on our trail. Doolin hasn't done anything except kill a man. That's not it. He's the last member of the Dalton gang. That makes him important. We need someone important around here. Help keep the boys in line. I said no. Cut. Go on, cut. I 
That settles it. Doolin stays. Someday you're going to run out of aces. Uh-oh, -uh, not me. Forced to seek friends outside the law, then chosen as their leader, he looks for more recruits that were soon to ride as the Doolin Gang of Oklahoma. If we're going to get Tulsa Jack out of there, what are we sitting here for? He likes to look. At what? We've got guns. Why don't we use them? Yeah, we need a fellow like Tulsa. You know, he can blow a safe with less noise than anyone I ever knew. Bill, that jail ain't big, but it looks harder to get into than most jails is to get out of. That's rather an ambiguous statement. Why don't you keep your conversation to yourself? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were talking to me. My name is Bill, too. Maybe you'd better change it. I have. Several times. Once even to a number. Some places they uh, seem to regard it as uh, unlawful, even when you beat a man to the draw. Little Bill, they call me. Mr. Doolin? Why do you think my name's Doolin? Well, you left Coffeeville so hurriedly, you forgot to settle your stable bill. I paid it for you. Thanks. How much do you? Oh, nothing. It was a privilege. If I was you, Mr. Doolin, I'd get on over to that jail right now. See that gentleman just shutting the door? He's the jailer. He's on his way to visit his lady friend. They play cribbage for about an hour every afternoon. Pardon me, Mr. Doolin. Um, maybe this will help. Thanks. It's a pleasure. You in charge here? Yeah. I'm the new U.S. Marshal for this area. Yes, sir. Official business, uh, private. All right, boys, clear out. Come on, hurry up. If you have a prisoner here by the name of Tulsa Jack, I've come to take him back to Guthrie. Oh, that one. Glad well, to get rid of him. He's a bad one. This way, gentlemen. Tulsa. Tulsa Jack. Oh, I forgot. I can't turn the prisoner over till I see the extradition paper. Let's do. Open his cell. I'll lose my job for this. You'll be lucky if you don't lose your life. Open the cell. Get moving. Thanks. I'll do as much for you sometime. Hope you don't have to. And so the Doolin gang was formed. Red Buck, born George Waitman, notorious horse thief. Arkansas Tom Jones, whose fingers were nimble with a card or a six-gun. Tulsa Jack Blake, wild wrangler. Bitter Creek, spawn of the Cherokee Strip. Bill Doolin, Oklahoma rage rider. Little Bill, the Pennsylvania. The Doolins ride. business tonight. It's after hours. Besides, I'm having my supper. You finish your supper. Wipe your chin. Open that safe. What? You see, sir, we have to eat, too. That Flying A ranch payroll you received today sort of whets our appetite. Sorry to interrupt your supper. Oh, he's lost his appetite, Bill. Haven't you? <laughs> yeah. next on the agenda, Big Bill? Well, that? I mean, what safe are we going to blow up next? Here's your share, little Bill. 
I'm going to hold up here and take it easy. Here? Sure. Nobody comes here. Road doesn't even pass by anymore. What about the rest of us? You're taking a fishing trip up north by yourself. And you, Better Creek, you've been going around with a long face recently. I think it'd do you good if you paid a little visit to that girl of yours in Ingalls. Wouldn't do me any harm. What's up your sleeve, Big Bill? Nothing except for our own protection. We've stirred things up enough throughout the territory and all around. We're going to split up and disappear for a while. Tulsa, might be a good idea for you to take in the World's Fair at Chicago. You've never been east of Leavenworth. Nobody was there for five years. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody have a good time, and in three months you can call on Bitter Creek's girl, Rosa Cimarron. She'll tell you where we get together again. I don't like the idea of busting up just when we're riding high. You know what I said about getting overambitious, Redbuck. taking a rest, remember? I'm telling you, we got to get out of here. What's all the rush? I just robbed a bank. Alone? Well, there was only one bank. They're after me, I think. You think. Go on, get going. Head for the rocks, then we'll scallop. This will pay for things. Thanks.
Good morning. Good morning. Beautiful day, isn't it? Where'd you come from? Oh, I've been here all night. Had a little trouble following you. Look, brought your breakfast. That's not all you brought. Them fellas sure got big ears. What are we gonna do? Meet you in Ingalls in three months. I mean now. You stay here and eat your breakfast. This ain't no time for breakfast. Lift up the light of his countenance upon you and make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you, giving peace and comfort to you and your loved ones, both now and forever. Amen. How do you do, sir? I believe this is your first visit here. Uh, yes, it is, Parson. Too bad you came in late. You missed a fine sermon. I uh, rode as fast as I could. Oh, uh, this is Deacon and Mrs. Burton and their daughter, Elaine. Uh, Mr. Uh, 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 the name's uh, uh, Daly. Oh, Mr. Daly. Howdy. Howdy. Daly? New settler. Yes. 
Well, where are you located? South of here, about uh, 10 miles. 10 miles. You by the Johnson place? Uh, yes. Ezra Johnson said only last week he'd be happy to spend the rest of his life on that quarter section. Oh, uh, he did, huh? Uh, people change their minds, Father. <laughs> I'd like to know how you talked him into it. Well, I used to be a horse trader. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> I'd uh, better get by. Long ride. Good afternoon, folks. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. Mr. Daly. Mr. Daly? You must bring your family to church next time. Family? I would if I had one. Oh, alone, huh? Well, now, riding back to the farm with nobody there is too lonely a way to spend a Sunday afternoon. Why don't you come over to the house for chicken dinner? We should get to know the people who are making this country what it is. You'd be most welcome, Mr. Daly. Well, I... I'd be happy to take you up on that invitation, Miss Burton. Besides, uh, riding around this time of day is apt to get a little warm. fooling about how you and your mother can cook. And I'm a man who enjoys good food. Thank you. Who does the cooking at your place? Oh, nobody. I mean, I do. That's the trouble. What kind of farming do you do, Mr. Daly? Haven't decided what I'll go in for yet. And while I think of it, I answer quicker to Bill. Well, where did you learn your farming, Bill? Back in Arkansas from my father, but he wasn't much good at it, though. You should plant corn on that section of yours if it's the one I'm thinking of. What do you know about farming? Well, I grew up on one in Illinois. If I were a man, I'd have a quarter section of my own and be working it right now. Why? Well, I... I never thought why. I like the smell of the fresh soil, and I like to see things grow. The green sprouts pushing their way up through the earth. It's always seemed like a miracle to me. And it's good. Yes, I... I suppose it is. I've been trying to get Father to buy a piece of land not far from yours. I'm going to ride out next week and take a look at it. Maybe I'll look your place over if... if I'm invited. Well, sure you're invited any time. Mr. Johnson, he says to me, all this money is yourn for the whole place, lock, stock, and barrel. And that ain't all, Emmy. Five hundred dollars extra. Ten more pieces just like these if we're off the place within an hour. Well, Mr. Johnson, uh, what's the verdict? Well, for that much money, you can buy much better land than mine hereabouts, and a lot more of it. You don't understand. When I heard there was a Johnson in these parts, I said, that's the place for me. Johnson was my mother's name. It brings me luck. Well, that being the case, I... Emmy, we can go back to Danfield. Danfield? Yeah. Big excitement there last month. Bill Doolin robbed the bank. Oh. Are you acquainted with the place? Seems to me I've been there. Might be nice for all of you to get back home. All of us? Yes, all of you. I'm ashamed to take the money. It's almost like a holdup. Oh, no, it isn't, Mr. Johnson. Take my word for it. Come on, now. I'll help you pack and give you a personal escort out of town. Come on, Mom. Now, that ought to tide you over for quite a while, Mr. Daly. Yeah, I hate to waste time running into town for supplies. You work too hard. <laughs> I passed by your place the other day. What you've done in three months is hard to believe. I'm a fast worker. You sure are. Oh, by the way, that new organ you had sent down from Chicago for our church, we needed it very badly. That was real generous of you, Mr. Daly. Yes, sir. Nicest thing that's happened to this town for some time. How do you know about that? I told him. But it was generous of you, Bill. You forgotten something? No, don't think so. I bought you a present. An elephant. Elephant? Mm-hmm. For your watch, Father. Well, thanks. They're supposed to be very good luck in India. How are they in Oklahoma?
Stay right there, honey. I'll be right back and get you. Who's here? It's been a long time. How are you, Joe? What are you doing in this town? I'm well, just looking up a fellow I used to know. Uh, well, Lane, I want you to meet an old friend of mine, Joe Smith. How do you do? I've always wanted to meet an old friend of Bill. Uh, it's a pleasure, ma'am. You can probably tell me a lot of things about his past that he just won't tell me. Oh, I certainly can. Uh, Joe and I rode for the same ranch on the Cimarron. Oh. oh, by the way, if you want to pick up that dress of yours, I'll meet you there in the buckboard. All right. Goodbye, Mr. Smith. We must get together sometime and have a long talk about it. It'll fill a book. I bet it would. What's all this about? Well, Mr. Doolin, we, uh... The name around here is Daly. We figured it's high time we was getting back to work again. Didn't you get my letter in Ingalls? Yeah, that's why we're here. We got a big train job coming up. The biggest gold shipment yet. Mm -mm, I'm through retired. You can cut the cards for the Doolin gang. I've got myself a farm. You what? Well, fine. We can hide out there. Sorry, but that's out, too. There's a woman in my house. Her? Mm-hmm. What's the difference? A lot of difference. That woman's my wife. I got married three weeks ago. Bill Doolin. Married to a woman. Yeah. They make the best wives. It's the latest fashion, Bill. The very latest. Uh-huh. Here, hold this for me. But uh, how can you tell the front from the back? Well, the milliner told me. Oh. Do you like it? Very much. I knew you would. Now, what do you think of the dress? Oh. Prettiest in the whole territory, I bet. I hope they think so at the dance tomorrow night. Because, you know, this is my first opportunity to show off my new husband. New husband? Was there an old one? Of course not. They're sending all the way to Guthrie for an orchestra, and everybody's going to be there. Why don't you ask that friend of yours, Joe Smith, to come? Smith? Mm-hmm. Maybe I ought to. Well, he's such a nice person. We should invite him. Elaine. About the dance, I... I don't think we can go. Not go? That, uh, that new colt is sick, and somebody ought to stay here and look after it. A horse is much more important to us at this time than a dance. Sorry. It's all right, Bill. There'll be other dances. Years of them. Sure. Besides, I'd be jealous of all those men wanting to dance with my wife. I'd be jealous of all those women. I think I'd better ride over and see old man Jopke about that harrow he wants to sell before it gets too late. That's right, you should. See you later. Still don't know how you can tell the front from the back. <laughs> I'll have supper ready for you. No, he rode over to a neighbor's to see about buying a harrow. Is there something I could do? No, I guess not. Oh, she might know something. You see, ma'am, we're uh, United States Deputy Marshals. Trying to run down a fellow named uh, Bill Doolin. Doolin, the outlaw? I thought maybe some of the folks in these parts might have seen him. Well, I wouldn't know him if I did see him. Oh, he's a nice-looking fellow, ma'am. About uh, six foot two or three. Fool you. Never take him for a bad one. Last time we were on his trail, he was headed this way about three months ago. It was on a Sunday. I always remember because I, I sort of hate to miss those Sunday sermons. Sunday? Yeah. Well, I'd better leave one of these circulars with you, ma'am, just in case you or your husband are lucky enough to nab him. Well, I'll show it to him, but I, I doubt if he can help. Well, thanks very much, ma'am. Good day, gentlemen. Good day.
pretty low down trick. Oh, forget it. Best thing could happen. We need jewelers. You said so yourself. Where did you get this? There were marshals at the house this afternoon. They left it. The student seems to have moved around a lot. Bill, I want the truth. Looks like you've already made up your minds. Are you Bill Doolin or aren't you? Please, Father, let me. Well? Yes, I'm Doolin. Didn't know I was worth this much. The price has gone up. Is that all you have to say? Drive her home, Mother. I'd like to talk to Bill. But, Father, I... You'd better go along. I was hoping there'd been some mistake. Why did you do it, Bill? Why? For the same reason other men get married and have homes. Had a crazy idea of... She'd never find out that in time the name of Doolin would be forgotten. So you'd burn it. Can you burn the thousands they'll print to take its place? There'll always be more of them following you wherever you go. Then one day, they'll be ahead of you. You're dead, Bill. And I don't want my daughter married to a dead man. I guess you're right, Deacon. I guess that's the funeral procession starting from here. No, Bill. It started the day you became a man against the law. What do you aim to do? What do you aim to do? With you, Elaine could never live, never be free. No matter how far you took her, she'd never be able to run away from this thing that's your past any more than she could run away from her own mind. There's only one way to set her free. Right out of her life. I'm not speaking as a deacon, but as a father. I leave the decision for you to make, Bill. Ho! Oh, turn around, I'm going back. Elaine! Bill's my husband and my place is with him. Get up! Oh, Elaine, you crazy girl! Bill! Bill! Where is he? He's gone. He said you must forget Bill Daly because he was a man who never lived. One thing to Doolin's credit, he's a smart general. Lays low for a long time after each robbery and then bobs up in a new place on the other side of the map where we least expect him. Might just as well be swallowed up by the earth for all the trail they leave. The past year we've been looking for a pattern the Doolin gang works by. <laughs> if anybody has one, I wish they'd show it to me. Maybe I can. Right here in this map. It isn't the nature of men like that to hole up in a cave or ranch house for weeks at a time. 
Once in a while, they've got to let off steam. Now, if you draw a circle around these towns, what do you find in the center? Carson, Kane City, and Ingalls. We'll split and hit them all. Ingalls? That's a town worth hitting. You figure they'll strike there next? I don't think they ever will. It's the middle of their operations. My hunch is that that's where the gang goes to spend their money. Drink up there, Joe. You don't have to pay for it tonight. At least a smile on your pan there, Tilly. Our gentleman hosts like it's gay and cheerful. Well, how you doing? Fine. My dear Mrs. Price, do you realize what it would mean to become the first and one and only Mrs. Thomas Arkansas Jones? Now stop and think. I have stopped. That's what stops me. Don't listen to him, Melissa. He's only looking for free room and board. Oh, come on, Melissa. Marry me, please. Ask me sometime when you're sober, Arkansas. It's a funny thing. She won't marry me when I'm drunk, and I won't marry her when I'm sober. <laughs> <laughs> what you laughing at, you big bazoos? <laughs> Uh, get back in that card game before them dodos I dug up for you leave. That's right, my dear. Business before pleasure. Drink up, Rose. We're celebrating. Why? Because you just got back or because you're about to go away again? I never know. Neither do I. I wish you'd do one of two things. Either stay here in Ingalls or, or take me with you. Oh, you know Doolin's rule about no women. Besides, you wouldn't want me to quit just now when we're getting rich. No. But I worry about you when you're away. Cattle buy. Nothing to worry about. Hi, folks. Hi. Say, I want you to meet Cattle Annie. Annie, this is the Oh, road. everybody knows Rose. And I've seen you around town before, too. You won them there are cattle buying fellers. Like him. Yeah, like him. <laughs> yeah, sit down. Oh, sure. Oh, hey, lady. Bring us another bottle of bubbles. Aren't you a little young to be going to a party? Oh, Pa will be mad at old Nick when I get home. But I'm growed. <laughs> I stole his best saddle horse to get here, too. I reckon I'm old enough to learn a couple of things. <laughs> <clears throat> Honey, maybe you've learned a couple too many. <laughs> hey, mister, what? ever have any fun anymore? No, not much anymore. I'll be right back. I sure wish I knew what kind of cattle you gentlemen trade in that makes so much money. I kind of like to get in on it. <laughs> I ain't called Cattle Annie for nothing. I know all about cows, especially them kind that shoots back. <laughs> Well, they say a man's in the best company when he's alone. Only, this isn't like you, Bill. I like it. But you're paying for this party. You ought to be in there getting your money's worth. A little too noisy. <laughs> You've changed. You used to be the one who made all the noise. Yeah. Bill. Bill, what I really came out here for was to talk about Bitter Creek. What about it? We want to get married. Only I won't do it and be left behind. You mean you'd go on the rides? I'd go anywhere with Bitter Creek. For a woman? Well, other women have ridden with their men. Belle Starr did. And the wives of Murrieta's men rode, too. Sorry, Rose, you know the rule. The rule? Is that rule because you didn't find a girl who would take you for what you are? Who'd stand by you when you... Rose, I think you'd better go back to your friends. I'm sorry, Bill. I spoke out of turn. That's all right.
All yours if you play the Arkansas Traveler. Get her up, boys. See when we come through next time, Annie. Must be awful scary cows if you got to sneak up on them in the dark. <laughs> Goodbye, baby. Bitter Creek. Forgetting something? Thanks. If I lose these, I lose my luck. Wouldn't like that. Wish I could ride with them. Keep out of drafts, honey. I'll do the best I can. Thanks for everything. Register, gentlemen. All later. We understand you have some visitors here. The same crowd, day by day, night by night, except for an occasional drummer with a city line of chatter and a sample case of bum jokes. <laughs> I was one of them. But you can't be. All you can do is sit here and hear that tune played and watch them leave and wonder if they're going to come back. You're talking about love. I'm talking about cows. I suppose if I asked if any of you had ever heard of the Doolin gang, the answer would be no. But if you people think you're doing something noble, by shielding the most desperate gang of outlaws that ever hit Oklahoma, you're absolutely wrong. I know they seem exciting to you because of the daring things they've done, their generosity while here. But that doesn't make them worth defending. They'll bring on you the same kind of trouble they brought on other people, and the same kind they'll bring on themselves. Remember, we of the law will beat them because the right is on our side. And that makes a big difference. Let's go. Come on, everybody. Drinks on the house. We'll get some horses and try to pick up that trail. They can't be too far ahead of us. You stay here at the hotel and pretend to be a land buyer. Live at the Golden Eagle and see what you can find out. Good luck. We kill for what? Pennies. Maybe this will be enough for you. Take it all. This fellow's about to crawl in a hole in the ground and pull a hole in after him. Someone should have seen him. Trouble is, the farmers and ranchers are either friends of Doolin's or too scared to talk. Hope that Doolin crowd's as tired as I am. But we still have a few hours before dark. We better split up here. Masterson, uh, you and Leif take the trail to the right. The rest of you head east. Stop at every house you come to and see what you can find out. We'll all meet a party tomorrow. Good. <coughs> he calls that stuff coffee. That ain't coffee, that's just thin tar. 
Pass the bean. Jim? Yes, again. Tell us to give me some of them taters, will you? No rooms left. We're all filled up. I'm an after room. You're too late for supper, too. I've eaten. I'm on my way to Pawnee. I guess I took the wrong road. I guess you did. Which way do I go? Go back to the Forks. Turn right. It's the quickest way. Much obliged. Good night. I remember this, Doolin. Somebody once said, no man's bad enough to be shot in the back. Get out of my way. Leave it alone. I'm gonna get him. Sure, shoot that one bad, and you'll have a hundred more coming right for you. You'll do as I say. If that's the way you want it. <laughs> They can't help. You've been driving us too hard. You've been taking chances you'd never take before. Sticking up those petty cash banks you wouldn't even have looked at. Just to keep yourself busy. Oh, the boys need a change, Bill. They, they need a change bad or they're going to go daffy. Why don't you look at yourself the way the rest of us been seeing you? Will you... You used to reason with a man, and then you'd hit him if you had to, but... Oh, now you just beat his brains out, and you don't even try to talk to him. You're going sour, Bill. You're going sour as vinegar, and you're making the rest of us that way, too. When that happens, someone's going to get sore enough to make a mistake. The mistakes are what put an end to the James boys and the Dalton gang. <laughs> you know, I, I remember in that school I went to back in Pennsylvania, I was, I was reading, oh, it was something that was said at the signing of the Declaration of Independence. Old Ben Franklin said, um, well, we, we shall all hang together, or assuredly we shall all hang separately. Now, that fits us just like it fit them. Talk too much, Professor.
All right, boys, start packing. Man, now you're talking. Where are we headed for, Texas? Oh, no. A place where Hughes will least expect us to show up again. We're doubling our trail back to Ingalls to pick up fresh supplies and maybe a bit of fun. When we get there, the drinks are on me. Get Yippee! going. You too, Red Buck. Oh, Bertie, cook a plenty of steaks and eggs this morning and a big platter of flapjacks. And set up six, no, make it seven places in the private dining room. I'll eat with them. Yes, Mum. Morning, Mrs. Price. Morning. Going out to buy up some more farms? I expect to close the deal today. That'll be nice. Not many guests in the hotel now. Not many. They come, they go. Mm. Well, bye. Bye. Who's that? Just a land buyer. Handsome looking man, don't you think? You haven't been shining up no stranger since I've been away on business, have you? Wouldn't you like to know, sweetie? Morning, Al. Saddled up? Eh? Are you saddled up? Yeah, real ready. <laughs> Looks like a lot of riders came in here last night late. Eh? I say a lot of riders came in last night late. Oh, hey, a lot of them. <laughs> yes, you cattlemen. Riding through from Texas. You know them? You know them? You don't have to yell. <laughs> They've been here before. I knew them. Oh, yeah. Same bunch that were here a couple of weeks ago. I'm doing it now. Yeah, coming on. Yeah, you can climb aboard any time you're ready. Get this team ready on our other horses. We'll be leaving here in a few hours. That's what I'm doing now. Enough grub here to last the winter. That's all of it. And being left in the store. Red Buck, you and Tulsa start saddling up. Bit of creek when we finish here, go over and give Arkansas a hand with the guns and ammunition we got cats at the hotel. Maybe you could take a minute to say goodbye to Rose, but no more. Thanks. Hey, what's up? Yeah, I'm being chased. The law? Oh, no, worse, worse. <laughs> Did you hear me yelling at you? Well, not a word, Annie. I'm Cattle Annie, Mr. Doolin. I've been wanting to meet you. I'm planning on joining up with your outfit. You can change your plans. I'd advise you to go back home and forget you met little Bill or any of us. But, Mr. Doolin, I can fight like a man. See anybody on the road? Oh, not a thing, Bill. Nothing except those two Baker and Hanley freighters. Baker and Hanley freighters? They don't come through here anymore. They changed the route a week ago. All right, everybody inside. Hughes. I know it, I know it. We've got you covered, Doolin. You can't get away. Come out one by one with your hands up and nobody will get hurt. Just like I said, trap like rats. Yeah. Shut up. I'm giving you one last chance for your life, Bill Doolin. He ain't giving you no chance for yarn! Crazy little wild cat, lock her up in there. Don't let her become a part of this. Well, let me go! I can fight like a man! Put me down! Let me go! Let me go! They're all 
the stable. All except one. Sleeping indoors. What are you squawking about? I gave you my room, the best room this side of Kansas City. Was the best. Saddle the horses. Necked in the shoulder. We haven't got a chance. I'm getting out. Don't be a fool. Two seconds crossing that street. Maybe not a man. Back of the barn. Four in that hotel. Get that man out of there. Wait, wait. Yeah, come on. Enough is enough. Mrs. Price, 
If you hadn't tricked him into surrendering, we most certainly would have blown your hotel clean out of the territory. But, Melissa, I thought it was because of love. Yeah, love of her hotel. <laughs> <laughs> Every time we stop. Bill, Bitter Creek's got to have some rest. Isn't there some place we can take him? Can he ride? He's got to. Yes, he can ride. We'll head for Indian John's cabin on the reservation. This ain't no safe place to stop, Doolin. Maybe we'll get some warning if they come on the reservation. I tell you, we gotta keep going. He can't be moved right now. Well, uh, we can travel. You and me and little Bill. And leave them? Sure, why not? We gotta move fast. A woman and a sick man will slow us up. So what? We got our own necks to look after. Then you'd better look after yours. What do you mean? You can go. Alone? Alone. Oh, now look here, Doolin. I'll give you ten seconds. Well, we gotta go together. Supposing I run into those marshals. Three of us could stand them off, but one man ain't got a chance. They'll get me. Sure they'll get you. You should have thought of that before. Oh. Now move out. Now listen to it. Huh? again. And you can't stay with us either. Why not, Bill? I've come this far. It'll be safer for you and for him, too. Tomorrow, I'll take Lady to railroad. Yes. Go to Dodge City. As soon as he can travel, Biddle Creek will meet you there. It's the best way. This ain't safe. Let's go. You can't ride. Can't ride? Why, I can ride better than oh, anyone. Oh, Bitter Creek. I'll meet you in Dodge City, honey. Keep some champagne on ice. We'll be there to celebrate. Come on, you slow pokes. happen when you sent Rose up to Dodge City. I'll write a letter. What now, Big Bill? Thinking of a place a long way from here. A farm I used to own. Good house, fine soil. I guess the weeds and the pack rats have taken it over by now, but it'll be safe for a little while.
those gaps. There must be hundreds of them. Yeah, take a good look. It's the last big horse roundup you'll see in these parts. Probably running them up north to that new homestead territory they're opening. Farmers will buy them up fast. Can't farm without good animals. You know, farming isn't a bad life once you get the hang of it. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, I must have had too much education. Got too much imagination. I like the excitement of the wilderness. Think I'll be heading for the high border country in Montana. Getting too civilized here for you, huh? Civilized? Do you realize, Big Bill, that men like you and I are becoming obsolete, out of date? Why, Oklahoma's getting so civilized, before you know it, it'll be against the law to carry a gun. You reckon we ought to be moseying long before we run into one of those wranglers? Maybe so. <laughs> I'm getting so I see a badge on every man I meet. Yeah. Well, this is it. Those rats you said took over your place sure know how to keep it nice and clean. Oh, man, am I tired. Well, whoever took it over is going to put us up for the night. Doesn't look like anybody's at home. It's all right with me. Bill, let's lock that front door and go to sleep. Anyone comes back, they can wake us up. You're gonna feel good to sleep in a real bed for a change. Come on, we're going. Go on, we just got here. We're hitting the trail. Oh, Bill, you're local. I'm so tired I couldn't even climb aboard my horse. My wife's still living here. Your wife? Well, that's all the better. She wouldn't call the law. Come on, we're getting out of here. Bill. How do you do, Mrs. Daly? We met before. Oh, yes, I remember. I have a room for you if you'd like to wash up. Well, thank you, ma'am. And you can use that room. You'll find fresh clothes the way you left them. And if you're hungry, I'll fix you something. I'll take care of the horses. Yeah. It's been so lonely, Bill. But I knew you'd come back. I didn't know anyone would be here. I never left. My family tried to take me with them when they left Clayville, but... But I couldn't go. Oh, Bill! Writing, Elaine. Every week I wrote to you, but of course I couldn't mail them. Bill, when you leave this time, I'll be going with you. That's crazy talk. I'm a hunted man with a price on my head. Doesn't that mean anything to you? I'm your wife, and wherever you go, I'll go. If there were only some place, somewhere where they never find you, where you could start again. There is a place, a strip of land between Texas and Kansas. No state will claim it. Yeah. No man's land, they call it. They have no laws there. This is a strip 35 miles wide, 110 miles long. A man could change his name and nobody'd care who he was or what he had been. Well, then let's go there now together. Wouldn't be safe. Too much open territory to cross. There's a 
Big herd of horses coming up this way from the south in a few days. I could work my way across country as one of the Wranglers. What about me? You and little Bill follow with a wagon load of supplies. Then, when we're near the border, I'll join you. We can go the rest of the way together. We'll make it, Bill. I know we will. Sure, nobody will be thinking a farmer with a wife and a covered wagon could be Bill Doolin. We'll call ourselves uh, Barry. From this moment on, we're going to forget everything that's happened in the past. The Barrys will be fine people. And you can start a business or... or maybe we'll have another farm. I think I like that best. And from now on, the name Doolin is going to be like something that we've never heard of. Thank you. Well loaded up, Mrs. Daly. Now, let's see. Yeah? That'll be $97.45. That includes your old bill of $52. Maybe you'd like to pay a little on account? I'll pay for it all. Oh, you must have struck gold. Or maybe you finally heard from that husband of yours. I did. As a matter of fact, I'm going to join him in Colorado. He's, he's found a mine out there. Oh, that's why all the provisions. Mm-hmm. He always struck me as a man who'd be more at home in a saddle than in a mine or even on a farm. That's right. He wasn't cut out for farming. She paid cash. Yep. Husband sent it to her. I never could figure how a man could run off so quick and leave a pretty wife like that. Tall, handsome man like that, you know, it wouldn't surprise me a bit if some other woman wasn't after him. He sure left like somebody was after him. And that drawly way he had a talk and <laughs> used to make you feel kind of nice. Why, Morty. Mister, I wonder if I could have a few words with you. Sure, sure. Well, the wagon's all loaded. It's a shame we got to leave all this nice furniture. Well, you can always buy new furniture, little Bill. Yeah. You sure you're not going to change your mind and come all the way to the strip with us? Oh, no. I, I keep seeing myself far away in Montana. I just hope it is far enough away. <laughs> <laughs> Day, ma'am. How do you do? Is the man of the place around? No, he isn't. We're census takers. We're trying to find out how many people have moved into Oklahoma since the territory was opened. May we come in? Of course. Thank you. Your, uh, your name? Daly. Oh, I mean your full name. Uh, Elaine. No, no, I mean your, your husband's name. Bill. Bill? That is a... Uh, William. Any children? No. Where is your husband now? He's in Colorado. What part of Colorado? Uh, near Santa City. You mean Central City, don't you? Oh, oh yes, yes. That's what I mean. Now... Thank you very much, Mrs. Daly. Hope we haven't bothered you too much. Not at all. Good day. Good day. What's the matter? Census takers, they're United States Marshals. Marshall. If they'll put someone on to watch this farm, you'll never get out of here. We got a ride now. I I know of a place. Well, good. I'll saddle the horses. Well, what about the wagon? You can't take your wagon. It's too slow. You stay here.
Our hunch was right. This is where we lost Doolin a year ago. And I'm pretty sure this is where we're going to find him. with you before you got any closer to Clayville. Things have gone wrong. Some marshals rode into your farm. What? I got your wife out of there. She's at the church. I'm going in. Well, you can't. A whole carload of deputies rode in. Well, I can't leave her there. Well, what can you do? They've got every road covered. Wherever you show, they'll be ready for you. Listen, I'm taking a lane to the strip. If we've gone this far, and we're going to have our chance. How are you going to get into town? Watch me. When I get to the front of the herd, charge him from the rear. Empty your gun. I want a stampede. Stampede? Yeah, I'll lead him right into town. They'll follow. Good luck, Big Bill. Maybe I'll see you sometime. Sure, sure. I'll be working out in Montana. And I'll be reading about you in the papers. so new to me. But I can get used to it, Bill. I will. Sure, I know you will. You'd better get out of here before this excitement dies down. as fast as you can to your father's home. Stay there. I'll join you. 
No, Bill. I'm going with you. Sure, sure, you're going with me. But first, do as I say. It's best that we separate and travel alone for now. Believe me, it's the only way. All right. take to the sword shall perish with the sword.